Uh, so we are gunning for uh, evangelizing the entire concept of uh, uh, concept of charging your vehicles faster than your mobile phones. Hello and welcome to another episode of Eight. My name is Sanjay Chakravarti. I'm the founder of Tagit. When it comes to startups in India, they are usually known for the ability to Indianizing ideas and scaling it up significantly. Our guest today is someone who is completely reverse as far as this whole paradigm is concerned. If you guys have been following the newspaper, you definitely already have heard of him. He has just recently been awarded the most innovative company in the ET Awards. I'm absolutely delighted to have my friend. Akshay Singhal, who is the CEO founder of Log9 Materials. Akshay, thank you for taking time off. Hi, Sanjay. Thanks a lot for having me over. It's a pleasure. For, uh, looking forward to a great conversation here. Super. Let me jump into the first question. Who is Akshay? Your one breath question. So I see myself as a uh, climate solutions technologist. What I mean by that is whatever we are building, whatever I'm doing in life or whatever I'm building at Log9 has to start from that fundamental principle of solving for climate change. Super. Uh, Akshay, getting to the second question, throughout this series, it's always a one breath question. But in this case, I definitely want to make an exception and give you as much time as is required. Tell us what does Log9 material do? I mean, it's absolutely... Fascinating reading your story. Would like to hear from you. I'll keep it one breath only. So uh, I can dumb it down to a one breath, one liner, uh, which is basically that while we have uh, lithium ion and uh, those kind of battery technologies make sense for uh, electric vehicles around the world, these batteries were never developed uh, keeping Indian conditions, Indian type of vehicles, usage patterns in mind. So what we are doing at Log9 is building batteries for India, ground up, keeping Indian conditions and usage patterns in mind. Now, that basically means providing battery solutions depending upon platform, depending upon use case. So, we're building uh, InstaCharge battery technology for the two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler intracity segment and the aluminum fuel cell technology for the long-haul truck bus kind of intercity segment. So that's what we are doing at Log9. Super. I also read about fuel cell and that itself you know, also got my curiosity high. What's happening on that side? So basically what happens is that when you are trying to go for a longer distance, right? So in that sense, batteries don't work out because uh, after a point, uh, if you try to increase the range of a vehicle by increasing battery weight, what will happen is that the, the vehicle will only be carrying the battery. It will not have enough power to carry additional load. So what you're doing is you are taking up the entire load bearing capacity of the vehicle and putting the battery there. So after a point, batteries don't make sense. You can't just scale up batteries make them larger and larger and go for longer distance. So in that sense, from that perspective, you need something which can store more energy or more range, so to say, in a smaller packet. And that's where uh, fuel cells come in that they have far more higher energy density, still being clean, but they have more energy density. You can refuel them and go a longer distance. Another purpose of the fuel cells always is that instead of charging a very large battery, taking hours to charge it and a huge uh, grid infrastructure to charge it, you can essentially just refuel so that's what the, those are the benefits. Uh, and that's where uh, we are building our own uh, type of fuel cells, uh, where the world is gunning for hydrogen. The idea is to leverage aluminum in our case, A, because India is the second largest producer of aluminum in the world. And secondly, it is far more safer and easier to store aluminum as a solid metal plate rather than storing hydrogen, which is explosive gas in pressurized tanks. So that's that's the whole uh, thought process behind fuel cells. Oh, super. So... I always thought it was a it was a basic uh, you know kind of comparison between the two and and one of them would kind of uh, take over the other uh, so it's not that it's, it's really a synergy between the two at the end of the day you will still have the battery and it will work back with uh, the uh, cell and the cell right. could run through right. whichever material hydrogen or aluminium or whatever you use. Correct. So even in case of uh, the fuel cell system, so while our insta charge battery technology, which is for the small distance smaller platforms that is solely a battery based technology but the fuel cell technology cannot actually work without a battery pack 
So any fuel cell, whether it's hydrogen fuel cell or aluminum fuel cell, will always have a small battery component also there to maintain the entire system. But at the same time, you rightly said it's not a winner-take-all kind of a scenario. It is not that one technology will supersede everything else. One technology, this uh, fuel cell technology makes sense for long haul. Battery-based technologies make sense for short haul to mid haul. So we have to play them that way. It cannot be a one size fits all in that sense. Uh, it's been six years, and I see that uh, you know from the time you started your uh, venture, not only that uh, you've done some outstanding work, you've also got your PhD. Uh, so tell us, tell us your learnings. You know, you know from how do you kind of multitask, whether it's uh, the amount of innovation that you guys are doing, the uh, obviously getting a PhD itself and, and it's in nanotechnology, so it's pretty much in your field. So I don't know whether they gave you an honorary degree or you actually worked for it. Uh, I guess given the type of work you're doing, you should have anyway got it, uh, you know, so, but would love to hear from you, your uh, learnings in the last six years. I think I'll tell you a very interesting story why I joined, uh, enrolled in the PhD program in the first place. So while I was starting Log9 in 2015, uh, nobody would fund a material science neurotechnology startup in India. And uh, while my uh, parents were good enough to kind of give me some money to start it up, but I also needed to manage my monthly expenses, right? And at that time, uh, a sum of 30,000 rupees, which you used to get at, at stipend seemed like a lot of money to kind of manage your monthly expenses. So that was the reason why I enrolled in the PhD program that, hey, uh, while I uh, start to build log nine, and there will be a, a consistent source of 30,000 bucks every month. So that was the primary reason why I enrolled into it. Eventually, as you rightly said, uh, because the field of work was similar to what we are building at log nine in terms of our material competency on the graphene side and nanotechnology side. So it was uh, not something different that I had to do with PhD, but it was not honorary. We don't, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we are academic system is not that evolved in the country. So they are still uh, pretty old school in that way. I had to do the entire bit of actually even doing coursework, even then uh, writing the thesis, doing the experiments and doing all of those uh, processes like a usual student. The only leverage that they gave me was they uh, uh, made it part-time after uh, two years so that I can uh, be working full-time on log nine and then just uh, on few weekends could kind of complete my responsibilities as far as the PhD is concerned. That's a fabulous story, yeah. And uh, tell tell us, you know, how do you build a innovative innovation culture uh, in the organization, and how do you keep the you know keep that whole uh, sense of uh, momentum alive? So I think uh, what Log9 provides in the ecosystem is that for the first time uh, there is an option to join an Indian company which is working right at the materials level and solving problems ground up. So we have one, uh, luckily, uh, like throughout our journey, we never had a challenge where we were not getting access to good or great talent, I would say. There were a lot of people who, who were there, they didn't have an option to kind of, and many of them didn't even have an option to kind of just go abroad and maybe uh, study further there and then start doing something over there. Uh, and, and in that uh, sense, there were really good talent being wasted in very pathetic academic institutions across the country. So, so I think we were able to kind of attract the, like attract that talent very easily, and it has been a consistent thing uh, overall in the last six years. With that coming in, I think innovation becomes simpler. But at the same time, one of the important things that I always uh, say in log nine as well is break down a challenge or a problem or a, whatever you are working on from a very uh, fundamental uh, thinking perspective. And when you do that, uh, right up front you can see whether it would make sense or not make sense. Because uh, today, if you, even in the climate space, which I am very passionate about, a uh, lot of eye washing happens. People don't even look at the overall end-to-end -end cycle life, uh, so to say, impact of a technology or solution. And we're all just caught up with uh, what the market, where the marketing dollars are going and if uh, how people are projecting their solutions. So having that fundamental uh, uh, thought process is very important. I'll take a very simple example. Right. So a lot of uh, when we uh, announced uh, in generally in the market that we are building aluminum fuel cells and uh, you can get such a long range on the vehicle and everything, I started to get a lot of uh, requests uh, that give me a fuel cell, I'll put it up on a two-wheeler. Boss, it doesn't make, even make sense for a two-wheeler to use a fuel cell because uh, in the, in the, in the two-wheeler, you can just charge and discharge your battery and the eff energy efficiency of that will be significantly, significantly higher then creating a fuel and then using that fuel in a fuel cell. The fuel cells typically have far lower 
end to end efficiency but that makes sense when you try, try talking about long haul distances because batteries are not viable as i just explained right. so people don't think it from that perspective think end to end just don't get fascinated about a small piece that you are looking at and saying that ha ha ye kar lete right no i mean i guess uh, akshay that's really the most fascinating part about uh, your venture really even a lot of the companies that are supposedly cutting edge ai ml as you said at the end of the day when you look into it it's the same business and something has just been there's a overlay of something which gets into that but what what you guys are doing is absolutely uh, incredible let me get to the uh, next question any personal trait of yours that has helped you in running the business any habit of yours so i think uh, one habit that i would always turn to is that does it make sense for the climate right and i got into this uh, scenario particularly when i moved to bangalore i always was conscious but i think i got more aware and so to say knowledgeable about the space as i started to work in the filtration and battery space after moving to bangalore in 2017 uh, and i think if when if when you have one guiding principle and just one and one only guiding principle then a lot of things become very very simple because for any dilemma for any question you can always turn to that principle and say that does it make sense or does it not make sense if it is solving for climate it makes sense we will do it at long run if it is not making sense we will not do it so it's a very simple go no go kind of a situation that uh, that has kind of eased out a lot of things amazing amazing let me get to the last question one breath question is log 9 in 8 months and log 9 in 8 years so in 8 months the idea is to kind of uh, basically put up more and more uh, vehicles on the insta charge scenario as far as two wheelers three wheelers and four wheelers are concerned uh, so we are gunning for uh, evangelizing the entire concept of uh, uh, concept of charging your vehicles faster than your mobile phones so so that uh, you don't have any kind of uh, charging anxiety or rain anxiety in 8 years we want to cover uh, the entire commercial usage of vehicles across country across india across southeast asia africa latin america and basically any any country or any geography which is similar in terms of climate weather and usage patterns like india is uh, and that that does not stop us to to three two or three and four wheeler but also trucks and buses with our aluminum fuel cell and stuff like that and the reason we want to focus on the commercial usage of vehicles is because uh, 70% of all emissions from the transport sector come from commercial usage and not from personal usage hmm. so that is the that is the most important impact area where you need to solve for outstanding the most exciting part is that finally we have an indian company that is pretty much working on cutting edge things you know uh, and uh, hopefully uh, sooner than later we'll have uh, you know you may be emerging as the elon musk of india so so i'm absolutely excited to see how log9 goes uh, from here on wish you the very best and thanks for coming in yeah thanks ajay and just as a parting comment i would like to say that one good thing that uh, three idiots probably taught us was that gun for excellence and not success success will come after that so i think uh, that has helped us be very resilient for the last 6 years and now we are uh, seeing successful launches happening in the ev space for lot nine outstanding great and catch up soon thank you sanjay pleasure